What's going on everyone? Liz here from Learn Robotics and welcome to episode number four of Learn Robotics Live. This is a special topics robotics course where you can tune in every Friday, ask me questions, build the projects, and have a lot of fun with robotics. So I hope you guys are excited. If it's your first time here, we're in the middle of working on our robotic Jeep project. So go ahead back to episode number three. You can find that in our free robotics course on learnrobotics.org. You can sign up and watch all of the previous episodes, get access to the downloads, the materials list, and a course certificate, 100% free. All you need to do is head on over to learnrobotics.org or click the link in the show notes below and sign up for the course. So for today's lesson, we are going to be working on our robotic Jeep. And this thing is pretty cool. It has a app that goes along with it. This is the Elegoo mini car. And we built it up last week. And now we're going to go through the app. I'm gonna show you how to get it paired with Bluetooth, do some tele-app control, and then we're gonna write some basic code using Scratch, 100% in the app. You don't even need a computer for this project, which is pretty cool. And then in next week's episode, we're gonna go through and actually program this as an Arduino robot, utilize some of the built-in sensors and write our own custom logic to make this thing do some awesome challenges. So sit back, relax, it's Friday. We're gonna have a lot of fun. One of the cool things about doing these videos is you just get to see my face. <laughs> So the first thing you're going to need to do is download the Elegoo app. It is available for iOS and Android, 100% free. All you need to do is search Elegoo and it should come up. So once you have the app, we are actually going to go take a look at it right now. You can launch it and we've got the Smart Robot Mini Car. So you're going to click on that. And if you have some of the other cars that they offer, I'm a huge fan of their Elegoo. Um, smart robot car. I use that in the Build Arduino Robots course. I also have a few tutorials using that. They've also included that here. So if you're an Elegoo fan or you have some of their other products, they have updated this app and you can also control that robot um, using this app as well. But for now, we're just going to head on over to the smart mini car. And what you're going to need to do is have your robot charged in nearby. I'm going to show you what this rocker control is. It's basically like turning your smartphone into an RC controller um, for this robot. So it's pretty cool. So we're going to flip on the on switch on the car and it should light up and then we'll click on rocker control and it's going to ask you to connect your device. Just make sure your smartphone has Bluetooth enabled. Otherwise it won't be able to connect to the car. Just click OK and we're connected. So now we can actually drive our robot around, use the joystick to control the motors. And you can also use the gyro on your phone to uh, control the robot as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll shut that mode off. Another cool thing to know is that this little Jeep has a speaker or a buzzer and you can actually trigger the horn. So that's pretty cool. And so literally right out of the box, you can start driving this thing around. It's got some built-in modes. You can do some object avoiding, object following. You can do line following. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, already pre-programmed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually explore some of those topics in this lesson and learn how they're actually designed these programs, put together our own simple program using obstacle avoidance. So let's head on over to the programming menu. And you'll see if you're familiar with Scratch, this is a very similar setup. You've got a bunch of different categories on the left. And then on the right, you've got your um, actual programming board where you can drag and drop the blocks over and then you connect them. So the way the program is read is it's top to bottom and then if it's inside of a loop it'll go top to bottom and then it'll repeat itself however many iterations you tell it to. On the top is where you can name your project and I'm just going to call this 
uh, let's just call this move. We'll just do a very simple move just to kind of get used to how the blocks work and control. So if you're more advanced with programming, this may seem like really simple, maybe unnecessary, but I always recommend with any robot that you're working on, whether it's very simple or very complicated, to get used to it first by doing something simple. You know, the, the best way to um, get used to how a robot moves or even robot control is to always have like a baseline. And so whether I'm working on a little robot like this one or an industrial robot arm, it's always good to program something that you're familiar with and just see how it works. And that way, if it doesn't work the way you expect, you can always go back and make changes. And it's not a super complicated program that you're gonna have to try to debug and troubleshoot. So let's go ahead and write a very simple program that moves the robot forward for about a second and then back. So if you can see, I opened up the motion tab and there's a command called move forward and any of the commands that have like a little arrow pointing down, that means that there's more than one option available. So we can go back and forward can actually be changed to backwards, left, right, and stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the robot forward. We'll do that for one second. So open up the control window and choose the weight and we'll just leave it at one second and then we're going to go back into motion and then we'll make it backward and then we're going to do actually let's just make it stop for now so we'll drive forward for one second and then we'll stop so what you do is you can go up to the right corner and click save and it'll be saved in with some of your other programs and then to run this program, all you need to do is to go into the bottom right corner and click on the green play button. So forward for one second and then stop. So what we can do is we can go into the app and then what we'll do is we'll click the little play button and the robot should move forward and then stop. And I always recommend if you're going to be running some more complex programs to do the testing on the ground. That way you don't inadvertently send this guy off the table. Uh, but for this, we're just going to do very simple movements. So now let's go back into the app and we can add some more things to our program. Let's go ahead and we can make that move backwards. We'll add in another second and then we'll go ahead and we'll stop. And once you get the hang of this, it's like actually pretty fun. Like you can do this like with your friends or you, if you have kids, you can do this with them. It's kind of entertaining to go through and you've got all these um, different functionalities just completely built into the app. You don't need a computer. You don't really need to install any special anything other than the app that it came with. And the drivers and the software that it needs to connect should already be pre-installed. So it should be a pretty fun and accessible way to just get started with robotics. So let's go ahead and make this stop. And now what we should see is when we run this program, we can go ahead and awesome. So that looks pretty good. So the next little project we're gonna work on is getting our robot to avoid objects in front. So we've got this single sensor in the front. You can see it right here. And basically if it detects an object in the front of the robot, you can use that information to respond accordingly. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna detect the object. We'll stop the robot. We'll, we'll kind of back it up and then we'll like turn it around so that obviously it doesn't go in that same direction. So that's kind of the generic goal. We can save the program first, create another program. And then what I'm gonna do is call this avoid. Avoid. So the first thing we wanna do is bring in our conditionals. So the conditionals will be listed under control. And these are like our if statements, our while statements, any sort of loops, they'll all be inside of the control category. So you can bring that over and then we'll use the sensing have detected obstacles ahead. So if there is an obstacle in front of it, 
we can detect that and just make sure that this uh, diamond shaped block is connected into the if statement. If it's just floating somewhere, then it's not gonna be read. So make sure that's snapped in. And so if we see the object, we're gonna want to first stop the robot from moving. So we'll go ahead and bring down a stop command. And what we can do is wait about a second and then we can back up. So we can move backwards and then we can wait another second and we can go ahead and let's try to turn the robot. So we can set the left wheel clockwise and the right wheel counterclockwise. So whatever wheel is spinning backwards, that's the direction you're gonna be moving in. So we'll have it, let's just have it make a left turn. So left wheel is gonna be moving counterclockwise or anti-clockwise and the right wheel will be moving clockwise. So that'll be a left turn. And we can do that for, let's do that for about a second. So let's go ahead and just test this out. I'm gonna send the robot forward before this condition happens. And then if we see an object like my hand, it should stop, wait for a second, move backwards, and then turn. And we should probably throw a stop in there somewhere at the end, or maybe some sort of a forward motion. All right, and so we can let me see if there's another type of emotion that we can use. It's a little more, here you go, to the left. And let's get rid of that. We can go forward again. And then let's, let's actually just stop after we, after we move left. Okay, so that's not bad. So let's make this go for one second. And you can see kind of the process of going through this is like testing out a few commands at a time and seeing if it does exactly what you want it to do. And then once it does, you can go through and add a few more things to it and make it a little bit more complex. So right now I'm just testing to see where we're at. So now it sees it, it stops, it responds, it does its little turn, and now we're ready to go forward again and we're not in the way of this object. So that's pretty cool. So what we can do now that we have this code is if we want it to run forever, we can just bring this forever loop in. That's pretty nice. We've got a full set of code inside of here. So now we're basically doing object avoiding forever. And there's a ton of different ways of doing this. You can consolidate this by not having so many nested conditions or so many steps in between, but I just wanted to show you a, a different way of solving the same problem. And so if you were to do this object avoiding and somebody else were to do the object avoiding, you'd probably have two very different solutions that do the same thing. So what I recommend doing is if you have a robot available to go through this process yourself and come up with a solution for avoiding the objects, you have access to the sensors directly with the blocks and you have access to the motors. So just basically what you need to do is come up with a logic of solving the problem. And this is gonna prepare us for next week when we actually go through and write the controller for our DC motors and reading in the data from the sensors to avoid objects. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this project. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment below this video or find me on social media at Learn Robotics on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you guys in the free robotics course. We're on episode number four. We're halfway through the first season of Learn Robotics Live. So if you did miss the previous episodes, head on over to learnrobotics.org and sign up for the free robotics class. You can rewatch all of the episodes get access to the course downloads, code samples, and then the course certificate that I'm gonna be giving out at the end of the season. So if robotics is something that you're interested in, but you're not really sure how to get started, this is a great primer way to get involved with robotics at your own time. So I hope to see you guys in the course and see you guys next week for episode number five of Learn Robotics Live. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics. Go out there, have some fun this weekend, build a robot, 
and I'll see you guys next week for episode number five. This is so much fun. Like, why wouldn't you want to do this? This is a great little project to work on. And I'm not just saying that because I have it in front of me. I think this is awesome. If I had this like 10 years ago, I'd be having so much fun with it. What are you still doing here? Go get yourself a robot. Go program it. Have some fun.